Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to uh, talk a little more about this uh, eclipse that I'm, I and many are calling the Great American Eclipse. Um, I did a radio interview uh, last night on uh, Zen Garcia's channel. We talked about a lot of these things, um, a lot of the details I'm going through, and we ran through them all very fast. So these short videos are going to uh, talk about individual parts of the prophetic elements encoded in these eclipses that are coming across our country uh starting 2017 the first one last year 2023 and now the new one that's coming on april 8th if you haven't watched uh, the first two videos you should go watch those uh so you can get the setup for why we understand this is a prophetic event this eclipse and that god is indeed communicating through it in fact, we already learned that in the first eclipse in 2017, he spoke a clear sentence. He said, peace is to be darkened completely and ends in graves. That's the first sentence from the first, um, the first eclipse. The second eclipse is the sign of Jonah. And in it, he is Jonah. The same thing he said to Jonah, Jonah said to Nineveh, he's saying to us, you know, 40 days or you'll be overthrown. Basically, a, you've got a period of time to repent, but it's short. But now in this video, we're going to talk about the timings of these eclipses and how these timings tell us that there's something up, that this is special. Because we don't actually get eclipses all the time, okay? There's only been uh, previously eight total eclipses in American history, and I believe this is when it's the ninth. Nine is not a good number. When you see the number nine, it's not a good biblical number. All right, that's a bad sign. I'm not going to go into why, but um, total eclipses are more rare. And we've only had a, a handful of pairings of these. And previously, we had two total eclipses happening during the American Revolution. The next set was during uh, the Civil War, okay, during the first American Civil War. And I'm calling it the first American Civil War because we are expecting a second one. Now, um, the fact that the previous eclipse pairs were associated with the, the significant wars of our country uh, tell us that these pairs are prophesying the same thing, that they're an indication of coming war. I think everybody is pretty much understanding that. And what does an eclipse represent anyways? Well, it is the moon blocking the sun from the world. And the moon represents God's people. The sun represents Jesus Christ. It's a symbol for Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, in the sky, which is a symbol for God the Father. So uh, it's symbolically, the solar eclipse is God's people cutting off Jesus from the world, cutting off the, the world's ability to see Jesus. This is why there was an eclipse at the cross, at the crucifixion, because the people, God's people, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, cut off the Messiah from the world. So, we, so he, he died, so we couldn't see him. Well, um, same thing. What's happening now is God's people are not living in a way that allows people to see Jesus. We're lukewarm. We're living very uh, carnally as believers. We are. There's, we have no problem as believers with abortion or LGBT or any of these things the world's doing. We're, there's no divide between God's people and the world. And so because of that, the world, and even worse, there's hypocrisy too and self-righteousness and even abuse. Uh, sometimes it's worse, which is terrible. But what this means is the world can't see Jesus because the moon isn't doing its job. The moon is supposed to be shining the light of the sun into the world at night when the sun's not present. That's what the moon is supposed to do. That's what God's people are supposed to do. We're supposed to reflect the light of Jesus into the world at night while Jesus isn't with us. But when the moon doesn't do its job, when it gets out of its place and it tries to assume the role of Jesus, when it tries to become Jesus, and be him to people, it gets in the way of Jesus and blocks him so they can't see him. That's what an eclipse represents. So because 
the, God's people, the church, has failed. Judgment is coming. If the church had done its job, if the church would repent, judgment begins with the house of the Lord. If the church would repent of its lukewarmness, he wouldn't need to judge the country because there would be revival because we would be doing the work of God and repentance would be happening and he would have a knowledge that a plan is being worked and the country is being redeemed. He doesn't judge a country in the middle of a redeem redemptive process. The country is judged when the, God's people fail to do the job they're supposed to do. And that's why the eclipse means war. And war is a promise that we get when we break God's law. He said, if you don't keep my law, if you live carnally, like the church is doing, then you will get famine and war and plague. War is part of the, the, the promised judgment for failure to obey. So that is what the eclipse is saying. You have blocked Jesus' image from the world. You have taken his position, but created darkness where there should be light. And for this, there will be war. Because you are not walking with God in obedience and showing the world who Jesus is. And that is what Jesus demonstrated more than anything. Perfect obedience and alignment with the will of his Father. George Washington had a dream. Um, allegedly had a dream. This dream was posted in a newspaper in the early 1800s before the Civil War. Before the first Civil War. And in it, the, the man who said George Washington told him he had this dream... He says Washington was shown three major wars in America's history. The first was clearly the American Revolution. The second, he said George Washington saw America fighting itself, which was prophecy fulfilled because this man published this in this newspaper in the early 1800s, 40 years before the Civil War. So it was prophecy fulfilled. But he says George Washington saw a third war where the nations of the world came and attacked America um, and decimated, and that was the end of the United States. That's what Washington was shown, according to him. And I note that these pairing of eclipses match those three wars that Washington saw, the American Revolution, the Civil War, and now they're a prelude to the final one that's coming. All three of the eclipses in the past uh, seven years Notice that the 2017 eclipse and the, the 2024 eclipse is coming are seven years apart. Seven years apart. And uh, that's the, the seven's the number of completion. So it's a week of years. It's God giving us time to repent. You know, it's the, it's the closing of a repentance window is what it's uh, referencing. But every single one of the, the, the three from the past three years, the 2017 eclipse, the 2023 eclipse, and the 2024 eclipse are all happening on the 29th of a Hebrew month. And the 29th of a Hebrew month is called Yom Kippur Katan, and it means the little day of repentance. So each eclipse is occurring on a Hebrew calendar day that is referring to it's the day when you're supposed to repent from your recent sins that you've committed that month. You're supposed to repent before God that day and reminded of all you've done that month and repent of it that day. And it's called Yom Kippur Katan. And these eclipses are happening on that day. Each time God's saying, are you going to repent? You have some recent sins. Are you going to repent? He's sending the eclipse on that day to remind April 8th, which is when this uh, con this uh, eclipse is happening, is the last day of the Hebrew religious year. The very next day, uh, actually you could say it might even be happening, you could say it's happening on the first day of Nisan, which is the beginning of the, the Hebrew religious year. That's a big deal. First of Nisan is a big day. And that's the day this solar eclipse is going to happen in a month. We also have the alignment of planets happening. We have uh, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and uh, Neptune lining up the same day. And it's a, that is also a very rare occurrence. So understand, we've only had eight total eclipses in our history. These, they've always happened in time of war or, or prelude to war. This one 
I mean, the, the patterns are doing across the country are creating Hebrew letters. It's insane. We're going to be doing another video about that. But this one is not only that, but it's happening on the first day of the Hebrew religious year. Actually, the last day, the 29th. Then the next day is the first day of the religious year. So it's happening on the Yom Kippur Katans. And simultaneously with this eclipse, an even more rare event, which happens at most every 300 years or so, is these four planets are aligning, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Neptune. So combine that, we've only had eight total eclipses in our history, and then we're getting this one. At the same time, we have another event that only happens one every 300 years. How often do you think that happens? Once in 6,000 years is probably a very low probability for that. Once in the history of the world is a low probability. And what do these mean? Well, uh, I noticed that Jupiter is not in the alignment. And for, that makes sense to me because Jupiter, I, I'm still working to understand the symbolism of the planets. But Jupiter, uh, I have always believed was a symbol for Jesus and his humanity and his incarnation uh, taking blows for us. The sun is a symbol for Jesus as the son of God, as the radiant angel of the Lord, Messiah on his throne. And Jupiter is like him and his incarnation taking blows for us because Jupiter, uh, physically, Jupiter takes the blows of Earth. We are saved from so many asteroids uh, because of Jupiter. Jupiter like sucks in with its gravity all these asteroids and meteors that would hit us otherwise, but they go to Jupiter instead. And, but Jupiter has stripes. You know, Jesus took our stripes and it also has a big red storm on it, like a hole in its side that makes me think of the spear hole uh, when Jesus was stabbed in the side. So Jupiter's not in line here though. Instead, we got Venus, which is Aphrodite, the goddess of love, also Libertas. She's the same god as original as Libertas, the mother of all prostitutes. Venus represents the whore of Babylon. Mars is the god of war. Saturn's the god of the underworld, or the devil. And Neptune is the oceans. It's the god of the oceans. And the oceans are symbol for the world. So you have an alignment with the whore of Babylon, war, the devil, and the world. The whore of Babylon, war, the devil, and the world is lining up at the same time as this eclipse. We also have a comet coming uh, called the Devil's Comet. The scientists are calling it the Devil's Comet. They renamed it that because it suddenly sprouted horns. It's got explosions of, of, of gases coming off two sides that are creating horns in uh, their telescopes. And so they've renamed it. They've dubbed it the Devil's Comet. And it is... Coming by, uh, it's going to reach its perihelion, closest point to the sun, on the 21st of uh, April, which is Passover. So the Devil's Comet is coming by on Passover, and it's going to reach its closest point to Earth exactly 40 days after that, at, at the beginning of June, which is a time of testing. And I have a remind of the sign of Jonah saying 40 days or you will be destroyed. I'm not expecting the Devil's Comet to hit the United States or to hit the world. I don't, And I don't know that anything's going to happen 40 days after Passover or 40 days after the April 8th eclipse. I don't think that we're going to see something, I, mean, I guess we could, but I don't think we're going to see something incredibly tragic that day. I think it's just a window of time of repentance. There's about 40 days being given for repentance. And then that time of repentance will be closed. That is what I'm understanding. These timings are telling us two things. The timings are telling us there's something very significant and unusual happening as these things never line up. It has to do with war. And it has to do with repentance. And repentance is being called for. So... That's what I'm getting from the timings of this so far. We have much more to talk about. Uh, we've got more videos to do, at least seven, than I, than maybe eight. Uh, man, I don't want to do nine, but um, at probably eight videos in this series, and I'm, gonna, I'm trying to keep them shorter and break them up. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you soon in part four.